Welcome to another rousing edition of 30 Second Thursday. Normally I talk about something I bought that I like or something I'm selling that I like or something from my personal collection and I try to detail why I like it. This episode is going to be a little different. I'm going to talk about something that I bought that I don't like and I'll tell you why I don't like it and how you can try to avoid, uh, avoid that happening to you as a collector or even another dealer buying in the future. What you can do to avoid that, how you how you should handle it better than I handled it. So tell me what you think about the piece or the video in the comments below. Let me know if it helped you or if you hated it or whatever. But tell me something in the comments below. So this piece, I bought this from one of those Facebook group auctions and um, I bought it from a well-known dealer. Probably does, uh, it does one show probably better than any show I do and uh, does a bunch of the same shows that I've been doing over the last couple of years. But um, published a published dealer, I guess you could say. Bought this, paid a lot of money for it, which, you know, is thinking, bought it thinking it was probably a little earlier than it was, and then I get it, and it's clearly, clearly later, more like 1930s or so, but what really bugs me about it is the surface and the paint. I think best case scenario, it had over paint, and it's been sanded down to the blue paint, um, which has left it in a waxy surface. Sometimes sanding that paint off can leave it waxy, or you, I guess if you use a heat gun, I don't know, I've never actually taken a layer of paint off something to expose another layer underneath it, but it seems like sometimes when people do that, it does leave the piece waxy, and I think that, my best case scenario, that's what happened here. Worst case scenario is that this has just been newer paint and uh, sand it down and then covered in wax to cover up the fact that it was newer paint. And the longer I've had it, the more I've come to the conclusion that's what it is. Initially when I bought it, I thought it was just older paint that had been cleaned down to the blue level. Um, which bugged me, because I, I know there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, I just personally don't like to deal with stuff with, I, I don't deal with a ton of paint and stuff, so I try to, I wouldn't say I try to buy the best, I, the best possible examples, because that's not true. Um, but I tried to buy examples that aren't waxy, for sure. And I've never actually sold a waxy piece. Um, so I, I wouldn't have bought this had I known that was the case. Um, condition was a little rougher than I thought it would be and uh, has a lot, of, a lot of extra nail holes in it, um, or nails in it, that's never, never real attractive. So it looked much better in the photos. I get this thing, you know, this was a couple years ago. I was less, I guess less sure of myself, this dealer was certainly, like I said, um, more well-known than me, more, more respected, I guess, I don't know. I didn't feel like I could rock the boat. So, you know, a friend of mine used to tell me that you know dealers are supposed to know what they're buying and so they can't really complain about it, and I kind of, I guess, abided by that for a while, and um, this was bought through photos, though, so, and it's one thing if you buy something at a show and you want to return it down the road because you had a chance to inspect it, but... Um, a good dealer will stand behind it no matter what. And I know a lot of dealers are afraid of uh, returns after, and eh, buyer's remorse is one thing, and that's pretty annoying, but certainly if you sell it to another dealer and then you think they've spent time shopping it around trying to sell it and couldn't, and now they want to return it, you know, that's, that's super not cool. That definitely wasn't the case with this. I actually, I've taken it to a couple of shows. Um, I think once maybe I priced it at a profit, and every time after that I've priced it significantly less than I paid for it. Um, just hoping to get some money back with it. I don't know what I'll do with it. I don't particularly like having it in my booth. You know, what do you do with something you don't like? That's always a tricky thing as a dealer. Um, but I know I don't want to represent it for better than it is, such as I think it was represented to me. And I feel like, you know, I don't want to badmouth this dealer because had I said something, they probably would have taken it back, you know? Um, but I didn't feel confident enough to say something. So I think the lesson is that if you're unsure about something or unhappy with something, you should, you should question it. You should say something, whether it was bought in person or bought online or bought however. And uh, hopefully if the dealer is good and respectable and has a nice reputation, you, you know, they take returns and they take returns for lots of reasons. So I know I do for whatever reason. And especially something you sell online, you got to take returns for all reasons. So I don't want to bash the dealers. I'm not going to mention their name. Um, I doubt they'll see this. And if they do see it, they may never remember having this. It's been a couple of years. So... Definitely not a situation where I'm trying to get my money back or anything like that because I should have said something right away and I didn't. So the lesson is say something right away. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and uh, maybe next time I'll show you something cool and tell you why it's cool or maybe I'll show you something bad and tell you why I think it's bad. But thanks for watching.